What's the first thing that comes to your mind when I say the word Pakistan? Muslim country? Pakistan. Um, Shai the Freedi. Oh, of course, cricket. I'm a big cricket fan. It's just a country. <laughs> Islam because Pak means pure and pure is also Islam, so I would say Islam actually. Green and white. It's just a normal country, like any other country. Yeah, it's just a country. I would say a country that is still striving to have a um, relationship with India, but it's just not happening for some, some, some of the other reasons. What is the first word that comes to your mind when I say India? Um, um, poor people and slums. Tata. <laughs> Patriotism. Mahatma Gandhi, for sure. <laughs> On August 14, 1947, the largest mass migration the world has ever seen took place. 12.5 million people packed up their minimal belongings and trekked to a new homeland. An estimated several hundred thousand to a million lives were lost. Thus were created the newly independent states of India and Pakistan. The bitter consequences of the welcome split from British rule has plagued the relationship between these two countries ever since. Three major wars and numerous cross-border conflicts have impeded peace between the nuclear powers. As citizens of both countries struggled for food, education, and health care, the governments engaged in backtalk and petty politics. More than 60 years of rivalry has put citizens of both countries smack dab in the middle of the crossfire. But how much does any of it affect the people? Are average Pakistanis and Indians raging with anger at each other's existence? Do they see each other as brothers and sisters or as rivals? Do Canadian Pakistanis and Indians carry the sentiments of their forefathers? Or have they put the past in its place and decided to start anew? What about Pakistanis and Indians at UTM? These questions begged us for our attention, and so we embarked on a journey to find out their answers. And we know that you've uh, lived in India for three years. Um, how has your experience been living there? Um, I think my three years in India were the best um, three years of my life because um, I actually did my high school from India. And uh, before going to India, I had a lot of apprehensions about the people there. But once uh, I was there and once I made um, I started making friends, uh, I started having a really good time. And uh, when I reflect back on it right uh, now, um, after I've come to Canada, I, uh, I think I've really enjoyed my time there. The Indians ever curious to know about Pakistan or to know about, you know, Pakistani families and Pakistan in general when you were there? Um, in the beginning, everyone was curious and they wanted to know more mm -hmm. about me and um, about my country. But uh, once I did uh, become friends with them, I think they, um, really enjoyed uh, spending their time with me and uh, uh, finding more about Pakistan. What did your perspective change from um, when you were living in Pakistan? Um, I think uh, like when you haven't met someone and you have only heard stuff about him or her, um, it's, it's a different thing. But when you actually start to um, interact with someone um, and get to know them, it's a different thing. So before um, I went to India, obviously uh, I had a lot of uh, apprehensions, and I um, like um, the stuff. Most of the stuff I've, I'd heard about them from my friends or family or even teachers uh, wasn't um, good stuff. But uh, once I was there, and once I I, um, I I'd made friends there, I realized um, that um, everything I'd heard before, everything um, negative about them, wasn't true. And uh, they were actually very nice people, and I had a really good time there. So, um, so you played a role in uh, the documentary Sir de Bollywood. Um, you were interviewed for that. Um, how was your experience like being uh, in that documentary, and what has changed since then to now? Um, it was really great. Um, it was actually after my first year in India, um, and. Uh, what happened was that I was uh, the person who was making the documentary. I was actually contacted by her, and uh, she actually wanted to go to Pakistan and uh, become a journalist there. But then um, um, she ended up uh, dropping that idea because uh, the condition, the political condition in Pakistan, wasn't so good. And uh, then she thought that, like living in India, she would do something which would make a difference in uh, a small difference in Pakistan-India relations. And uh, that's what uh, got m me to uh, be part of the documentary. I wanted to be part of the cause. 
um, um, and I, because it was a, I think it was a great cause and uh, she wanted to make a difference. She wanted to portray uh, how Bollywood uh, creates uh, these uh, or puts these ideas uh, in our minds and uh, how it portrays each uh, both the countries, um, how it portrays the Pakistani especially through the Indians. So um, and I think I had to be in there uh, so that I could uh, present a Pakistani perspective and um, yeah, it was a great experience. Okay. So you have an Indian mom and a Pakistani dad. Um, how was it like uh, growing up in the household that you grew up in and, uh, you know, the values that they taught you? Um, all my life, like, we never really noticed the difference at home because it was just like, oh, I'm India and dad's from Pakistan. And we just used to go to different places when we used to visit our nannies and nana and dadi and dada. But when we used to go to school, because I went to a Pakistani school in Jeddah, mm -hmm. and people used to be like, oh, you go to India? Why do you go to India? Are you Hindu? Mm -hmm. You know, all of the weird, stereotypical mm -hmm. concepts. So yeah, that, that was the only difference. But before that, like when, before going to school and before even being exposed to anything else, it was just the same. Mm -hmm. There was no difference. So are your views any different than them? Yeah. Um, not really actually because my parents never actually taught me the difference mm -hmm. we never learned the difference it's only when we went to school people used to ask us oh where are you going for summer holidays mm -hmm. we used to say we're going to india and pakistan mm -hmm. that used to be like why india and pakistan mm -hmm. you know so have you uh, been to or lived in either india or pakistan yeah i've been to both places usually when we go to pakistan we also go to india mm -hmm. at the same time so yeah we, we go at the same place. what's the difference that you see um, in the way each nationality looks at each other in both countries. Um, yeah, there's a lot of difference. When I go to India, because I'm a Pakistani national, right? So I have to apply for an Indian mm -hmm. visa six months in advance. Mm -hmm. And my mom's an Indian, like she was born in India, taught in India, but she has to go through the same process. So the whole process of going through the visa and then the embassy people looking at you in a weird way, mm -hmm. that was just, that's uncomfortable. And then when we go to the um, customs on the airport, and people make you go through the, you know, the magnetic thing mm -hmm. again and again. That was just like awkward. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, what are your views on um, Indian and Pakistani students at UTM? Because you know, you can never tell. You shouldn't be able to tell in the first place mm -hmm. that you know that person is an Indian, that person is a Muslim, or an, or a Pakistani, that person is a Punjabi. Mm -hmm. You just look at them as one person. Mm -hmm. And and the level of unity and tolerance that you see here, I haven't seen anywhere i haven't seen that many places to begin with mm -hmm. but you know it's just it's it's inspiring mm -hmm. how how much unity there is at this campus mm -hmm. it's pretty amazing do you think diversity and multiculturalism plays any role in that oh definitely i mean i have a couple friends who uh who went to the united states for their studies and um i'm not and you know it's it's a hard time for pakistanis and for muslims especially in the U.S. after the 9-11. But I'm going to say I think Canada's policy, domestic policies are much different than the U United States. And, you know, m much of the laws, they favor uh, tolerance mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. Not that we need it in the first place, but the fact that you have a legal legislation background to support it, mm -hmm. I think it definitely helps. Deep down, uh, I think at the individual level, there are probably very few differences. Um, what I see is that the context is different. You mm -hmm. know, when you have two countries sharing borders and at the political level they're not necessarily the best of friends, that does percolate into the society and that informs uh, how um, how individuals then begin to, to act. Mm -hmm. You take them out of that context and put them in Canada where, uh, you know, they may come from a certain background but they certainly are not uh, in a situation where uh, their countries are shooting at each other. Mm -hmm. It creates a very different dynamics and and uh, by and large I find that uh, at least the, the better educated people, and I don't mean educated in the sense of having university degrees, but educated mm -hmm. in life, they tend to forget about those things. I, I have many friends of, uh, of Muslim origin from predominantly from Pakistan but also from other areas of the uh, of the Muslim world and we uh, they're some of my best friends mm -hmm. and uh, and I see others who have similar relations and and we interact at a different level because of that because the context is not there and mm -hmm. and this is just basic human nature when 
there is an atmosphere of uh, threat and suspicion. Uh, people act differently than when there is an atmosphere of inclusiveness and, uh, and, um, and harmony. Mm -hmm. How would you describe relations between Indians and Pakistanis at UTM? Oh, well, I have a friend that's Indian. It doesn't really, countries never really come between us. It's more like we're all from the same area and we were once kind of like one country, so it's kind of like that's how we work it out. Like, there's a lot of things that we connect upon. At UTM, well, I think it's a great campus with a lot of, uh, you know, Indians and Pakistanis, of course. And, uh, well, I have a lot of friends who are Pakistanis, and I think it's a, it's, it's a really uh, great, uh, uh, I would say, it's an environment where, you know, you can actually mingle up and talk to them and uh, interact. So I think it's, it's a great thing. We have a lot of events called, you know, in different associations. And it's, it's, it's really There's more integration here. There's more opportunities to mingle with them because we eliminate what makes us different and rather unite what yeah. we agree together that in turn deals with values and ethics and things like that so if we can have that and distribute it throughout globally then perhaps we can promote more peace to, amongst ourselves as Indians and Pakistanis. I think the ethnic background doesn't diversify them as being some, you know, some different sort of person. Mm -hmm. It's just that's the ethnicity that they come from. Mm -hmm. Whereas I'm a Pakistani and like that, that, other than my ethnicity, that doesn't define me as a person. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think on UTM, that's what people see is that mm -hmm. they see the person and not the ethnicity. There is no difference. Yeah. Like, you know, you're all friends. It doesn't, like, it's just you're all people. Like. I don't know. It's like yeah. normal friends. Yeah, it feels like we're one. It doesn't feel like there's any yeah, like difference. difference or like segregation between us. There's no hatred. Or... So do you think it's different from back in India or back in Pakistan? Definitely. Yeah, definitely because yeah. <laughs> I think it's like it, it's just their like mindset, the way they have been brought up. Back in India and Pakistan, what, what they have is they don't really get along very well for, for the reason that you know they uh, don't have you know a very close relationship whereas in Canada you see you have multicultural uh, environment multicultural people so I think they're more closer they come to meet each other they go to talk to each other they hang out and things like that back in India Pakistan I think they're still s struggling to keep that uh, relationship intact but I think uh, well hopefully soon they will have you know something coming up there's a lot more differences that people think of when they're back in India or in Pakistan they're thinking about <clears throat> the wars that occurred and all the disputes. Here we're all thinking that there's so many similarities between us. I was in an Indian school and I think that what we, what we used to learn in our history classes is how India, India won the war and how they did this and did that. I think that's the basic thing in school. We should not be teaching like you know how we are there to fight against them and how we won against them. And instead we should focus on the relationship, how to really uh, bring about a strong and you know, a uh, healthy relationship between the countries. I think that's the very key factor that has to be changed. And then I think moving forward, you know, it can spread globally and uh, uh, in politics and so on. Like I've been taught in my school that uh, India is not an, our enemy, but and it's actually our friend. Uh, I would have a different perspective towards mm -hmm. them, but uh, I think the schooling made a lot of difference and so um, it directs all the anger towards India and mm -hmm. uh, it creates this hostility between the two countries even if there's no uh, reason for the hostility they still do create it so that um, they can channel um, the public's um, anger from them towards India. Do you think that um, living in a multicultural place like Canada affects the way you see um, Indians and Pakistanis or your views and your beliefs in any way? Yeah, it definitely does, because I was born and brought up in Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. and you know how conservative that mm -hmm. place is. So when we came here, um, I started meeting, like, even though I, I've been brought up in that environment, I used to go to a Pakistani school, so most of my friends were Pakistanis, and it was all about, oh, we're Muslim, we're Pakistanis. Mm -hmm. When I came here, and I realized, like, I have a Christian friend, I have a Hindu friend, and I have a Sikh friend, mm -hmm. we have almost the same values. Mm -hmm. It's just that we worship the different God, but it's like they have the same curfew times. They have the same, you know, they can't go dressing naked and stuff. So, yeah. Well, I can't speak for uh, the older generations, particularly because I've, I've only seen student life in my past three years. Mm -hmm. And as part of the student life, I can say for sure that you're in a learning environment. You're in a tolerant environment. So 
I'm not going to say you're forced towards looking at it this way, but it just happens naturally. Because like I said, when you're picked out of that situation and you look at it from a different perspective, you dehumanize the Indian and you look at it as a person, as a friend. And there's so many friends that I have who are Indian and who, who share the same views as I do. And it's not that this tolerance has been forced upon them. It, it's sort of like an enlightenment themselves, you know? They get enlightened with the fact that they've uh, realized that, you know, we've come so far fighting each other when there was particularly nothing that could have made us that angry to begin with. You know? Societies that are more pluralistic, they tend to have greater potential for understanding because you see people, you know, when, when mm -hmm. I sit here with you mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and we talk, um, we're talking as two human beings and, mm -hmm. and, it, and you suddenly discover that this other human being sitting at, on mm -hmm. the other side is just like me. They, you know, you don't mm -hmm. laugh with an accent, you don't <laughs> you know, cry with an accent, and <laughs> your religion doesn't uh, doesn't necessarily interfere with us mm -hmm. just being two human beings. Mm -hmm. When you don't have that interaction at the personal level, I think you have that very distant foreign view of another community, another culture, mm -hmm. another religion. You display a trait for social activism, and you're very involved with um, events on campus. Um, is that something that you've been taught at home, or is that um, something that's just in in you? That's been taught at home. Like my parents have always told me that we're all human beings, mm -hmm. and wherever you need help, you should reach out and help people. So I think it's more like people tell me, "Oh, thank you so much for coming here. Thank you so much for doing this." But it's like. It's more of a duty, mm -hmm. like if everyone thinks of it that way, then maybe the world would be a better place. These generations, they've, they've, and Pakistan is not a very old country. I mean, this is just the third generation that we've seen. My grandparents migrated from India. So, you know, they've seen partition. My parents have seen the wars. And I think I'm lucky enough to see that, you know, the youth is stepping towards making a reconciliation process towards, you know, the two countries. Because I think collectively the subcontinent, you know, we've been, pretty much at our peak for a very long time, you know. So I'm, collectively the subcontinent can be, you know, it can be at its prime at any time. Mm -hmm. So I think it is important for us geopolitically, economically, socially, because, you know, the other day I was listening to um, Ali Heather's song, Purani Jeans, mm -hmm. and I read a comment underneath the YouTube video. It was by a couple of Indian students. They were like, you know, I listened to the song and I can totally relate to it. And I was like, of course you can, because, you know, we've, those are things that you can totally relate to. We're the same people. We crack the same kind of jokes. Yeah. We go through the same kind of, you know, socializing process. Our parents scold us in the same way. They punish us. They don't send us to our room. You know, they, they punish us in the same way. So I, I feel like, you know, we as people have so much in common. Even our festivals, you know, they feed off each other. And, you know, there's so many things that we have in common. It's just a pity that we spend so much of our budget and our energy just looking up to a war that might or might not happen. So, you know, that's one of the things. Indians and, uh, the Indians and Pakistanis living in Canada over here um, view each other as compared to back home. Yeah, there's a lot of difference. Like, definitely. Most of my friends are Indians and Pakistanis together. And a lot of my Indian friends want to know, like, what's the whole story about mm -hmm. Pakistan. And Pakistanis want to know what the whole story about Indians mm -hmm. are. So yeah, I think it's really cool here because then we get to explore our own, you know, concepts that people make back home. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So what do you think that the two, what do you think Indians and Pakistanis over here in Canada can teach to Indians and Pakistanis back home about the way we treat each other, about the way we interact? About the, the presence of pluralism in a society. And I think that's something that is very special here in Canada. Mm -hmm. we, we are building a society that is much like that. And we're building it from ground up, one step at a time. Uh, and I think we, we, that's something that we can teach the countries mm -hmm. back uh, in India and Pakistan that look at, this is a better way of doing thing, things, this is a better way of coexisting. Mm -hmm. Is there any one experience that you remember the most in India and one that hit you the most? Well, uh, there have been more than one uh, incidents where uh, which I think I, I would never be able to forget. But uh, one thing which moved me the most was uh, uh, when uh, I had a couple of family friends over from Pakistan, uh, and uh, their child, uh, the child that actually had a hole in his heart, and uh, they wanted uh, uh, they were there for his operation, and uh, they needed around 20, 15 to twenty bottles of blood, and we couldn't find enough people. So I called my Indian friends and. Uh, 
like uh, around 10 to 12 of my friends came to donate blood for him. And uh, I was, uh, it, this particular incident moved me um, a lot because um, it made me think how um, on an individual level we were willing to give blood to each other and we were willing to make sacrifices for each other but on a national level and a political level we were actually uh, trying to kill each other for their blood. So um, this, uh, I think this thing I would never be able to forget. So do you think a place like Canada, which is so multicultural and so diverse in ethnicities, can help build positive relationships between the two? I, I, I would be um, extending the argument too far if I say we can actually have a major influence on uh, how people interact in, 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 in that country because, as I said, political forces override a lot of things. Uh, I don't think a country far away from India and Pakistan uh, can set strong enough example that it would actually overcome some of the political considerations in that area. So, so we should be realistic about it. Mm -hmm. But we certainly can set an example for those who are watching mm -hmm. and that this is possible. What message would you give to the UTM student body in trying to eliminate the stereotypes that we may not, as students, we may not necessarily have of each other, but that generally go around? Um, and how to just be more friendly towards each other? You know, if I were to get our students to discover the world uh, and by going and traveling to, you know, 100 countries in the world, mm -hmm. or 128, as we, we have students from 128 students on this mm -hmm. campus. If I were to get them to go to all these countries and then to discover what these, these different cultures, different languages, different religions, and people from them, people who, who speak those languages and, and live in those cultures, they are like, it would be an impossible task. We have ha we have that whole world come here to mm -hmm. UTM. I think that's the message I would like to, to leave our students. Get out and discover what you have around yourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I, I go to this food court downstairs all the mm -hmm. time, and I'm, when I go there to grab a cup of coffee or something, I'm always looking around who's talking to who. One of my concerns is that there is a great deal of, if you look at it from a, from distance, mm -hmm. there's a, you see a lot of diversity on this campus. But when you get close up, what you see is people in their own little pockets talking mm -hmm. to others who are like them. Mm -hmm. you know, I think we need to break those walls. Mm -hmm. And you know, we have to have Chinese students talking to Pakistanis and Pakistanis mm -hmm. talking to Koreans and Koreans talking to the British and, and so mm -hmm. on and so forth. We need to, this is a wonderful opportunity, you don't, it doesn't cost you a cent, let's discover what other peoples are about, what makes them tick. Mm -hmm. And once you cross that line, once you begin to discover the real people behind, you know, a turban or a hijab or whatever else, or, a, you know, any other way of, you know, different accents and so on, you will see that we are all human beings down, you know, underneath and, and our skins and and that discovery is actually one of the most pleasant discoveries you will ever have. And that's where the better world is going to come from. I think when it comes to India and Pakistan, the most fitting analogy that I can think of is that of sibling rivalry. I mean, yeah, there's, um, there's war, there's conflict, there's misunderstandings, but then there's also that, that love and that mutual struggle for understanding. There's this jo joke going around uh, in Pakistan between um, the journalists and the young people that um, don't compare us to Indians because we're not like them, except for our culture, our history, our food, our music, and our DNA. We have nothing in common with them, so don't say that we're like Indians. And I think that's funny because it just shows that our generation is, is beginning to realize that the world is a small place. and um, like. The political situation, the wars, the the conflicts, they're not as relevant to us as they were uh, to our parents or our parents' parents, the way Principal Saini uh, mentioned before. It's just, they're not in our immediate collective memory. And so it they don't dictate our relationships that much. And I really appreciate the fact that young people like like us are beginning to wake up and realize that. And, and that's why we did the Peace Project, because yeah, sure, it's it's great to see Pakistanis and Indians getting along and being friends at UTM, but sometimes it's really necessary to just step back and ask why. Why are 
are these positive relationships occurring? How can we perpetuate this kind of behavior to outside uh, UTM? And we hope that we have done something along those lines, just like Sarhade Bollywood has managed to um, bring things like the portrayal of Indians and Pakistanis in mass media into light. I really hope that maybe somewhere we've gotten someone to just start thinking. There have always been efforts by the governments of both countries to achieve peaceful dialogue and understanding on certain issues, especially in recent years. But nothing the governments have done can match the strong will, sheer determination and fierce love shown by the average Pakistani or Indian when it comes to promoting peace. The dynamic tennis duo composed of India's Rowan Bopana and Pakistan's Assam al Haq has taken the world by storm with their Stop War, Start Tennis campaign. Organizations such as Friends Without Borders are instilling the values of peace and tolerance in Indian and Pakistani kids at a young age. The singular artistic language of musicians such as Atif Aslam, Junoon, and A.R. Rahman has been uniting the subcontinent for years. Even here at UTM, Indian and Pakistani students' refreshing take on building and promoting peaceful relationships is unparalleled. Despite the wars and political conflicts, the new generation is waking up. We do not know how long it will take for the two countries to achieve political peace, but what we have learned from the making of this documentary is that achieving peace is certainly possible. in India. Is there any particular experience that you remember or one that hit you the most? Uh, well, one thing uh, which I can never forget is uh, that one side of my family. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I screwed this. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Be sitting here? <laughs> no, I think you need to be sitting here. So I'm looking at you and saying it. So, you've lived in India. Is there any experience that <laughs> so, you going to start laughing? <laughs> So you recently took part in a art exhibition in gallery in Calgary. <laughs> in gallery. Yeah. Okay, can I redo that? Okay. It was so cute. <laughs> no, I'm gonna start laughing. So, I think that um, multicultural environment, like yeah, because if you look at our parents, then it was completely different. <laughs> Sorry. Did you <laughs> see the guy? <laughs> Are you gonna have your mind? <laughs> They're Indians, they're not people of India. People of India. Indian people. Indian. You recently took part in a art exhibition in Calgary. How was that? And what was the what was the what, what is it called? What's the word? Turnout. Turnout. <laughs> what was the turnout? Uh, okay, I'm going to redo that. <laughs> um, okay. I think when it comes to India and Pakistan, the most fitting analogy that I can think of... Stop it. Okay. We lost the flow. <laughs> I know, I lost the flow. Okay, so think about it in the, in the end. Think about it. Okay, fine. Yeah? Okay. Um, is it recording? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs>